She was known as Aunt Skinny Ginny, Grandma Jen, Ginny, Virgie, and to me as simply Mom. Born on March 10, 1927 to Irish immigrants in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the third oldest of seven children, my mom, Virginia Therese Hallahan Coppers, was known as a hot ticket. <laughs> At five feet five inches and all of a hundred pounds soaking wet, she was small, but she was mighty. Armed with looks, a quick wit, and a sharp tongue, my mom could charm the pants off you with that Boston accent, or cut you down to size, depending on what the situation called for. As a kid growing up, heck, even as an adult, I never tired of hearing the stories of her youth. Babysitting one night during World War II and making fudge, knowing full well she shouldn't, since sugar was being rationed and was a rare commodity. When the parents came home early, mom panicked at being caught, prompting her to dump the entire pan of fudge into a load of dirty laundry. <laughs> Another rare commodity on the home front during World War II was available men. Mom and her best friend Edith, desperate for dates, accepted an invitation to dinner and a movie from two very nice young men one Saturday night. Dinner was at a real ritzy restaurant where the ladies ordered the most expensive items on the menu. After dinner, it was off to the movies. At the first chance they had, Mom and Edith ditched the poor, unsuspecting suitors and snuck out in the warm, balmy summer night. Footloose, fancy free, with full stomachs. <laughs> These stories from her single days give you a sense of Mom's appetite for hijinks, an appetite that did not diminish throughout her adult life. At family gatherings, Aunt Skinny Ginny was the one crazy aunt riding the minibike, or swapping ghost stories with my cousins and nephews one dark summer night. That evening's tall tales closed with a clandestine trip to the local cemetery. Mom in her PJs, her fellow ghouls in tow. My mom also loved to gamble. Nothing high stakes, just penny poker. You could find mason jars of her loot stashed in her kitchen cabinet, along with a deck of cards, ready for a hand of poker with my brother, his friends, or her grandchildren. My brother used to joke that mom taught my nieces and nephews how to count by playing cards. When she passed away, my siblings and I thought it only fitting to distribute her winnings amongst her grandchildren. I think it came to about $11 per child. <laughs> Not much. Yet to us, it was such a meaningful way to pass along a little bit of our mom's legacy to the youngins and her tribe. These stories aside, there were also some very dark times in my mother's life. The sudden death of her beloved older sister, the tragic loss of her infant son, an unhappy marriage, all leading to struggles with alcohol and depression. Her dark side, especially during her struggles with alcohol, made it very challenging growing up as my mother's daughter. Even after she went through treatment for her addiction, our relationship was rocky. However, by embracing the Alcoholics Anonymous 12-step recovery program, my mom had the courage to seek me out and make amends. Through the grace of God, time, and a willingness on both our parts, we found our way to an amazingly loving and close relationship. Through those good times and bad, mom's courage, resiliency, and sense of humor taught me many things. Most notably, to risk stepping out of my comfort zone and do the unconventional, simply for the sake of living joyously. Though she passed away in January of 2004, her spirit remains close to me. I still strive to do things I believe would make her proud. I challenge myself to do something crazy every now and then to prove an old mom like me can still cut a rug and 
keep it real. <laughs> Much to the chagrin of my teenage kids. Thank you, Mom. I love you. And thank you.